Well, guys, we are going to continue with the fourth chapter of semester one, where we are going to study state of matter. So uh, let's have a look at the content of the lesson. So we are going to have a look at what is gas, what is liquid, what is solid, and finally phase diagram. So through the past question analysis, this chapter has always been one of the uh, hot topic for STPM semester one. So without hesitation, let's have a look at the content of the lessons. So here are a few properties of gases. So um, starting from the first one, we say is that gas volume changes greatly with pressure. So when a sample of confined to a container of variable volume, such as piston cylinder assembly, an external force can compress the gas. So we we'll remove that, that removing the internal forces allows the gas volume to increase again. Second of all, gas volume changes greatly with temperature too. So when the gas sample was at constant pressure is heated, its volume increases, and when cool, the volume decreases. Gas has relatively low viscosity, so gas flows much more freely than liquid and solid. So less viscosity allows gases to be transported through the pipe over a long distance, but also to leak rapidly out of a small hole. Most of the gases have relatively low density under normal conditions. So gas density is usually tabulated by in a unit of gram per liter, whereas the liquid in solids are gram per milliliter. And finally, gases are miscible. So miscible substances mix with one another in any proportion to form a solution. Air, as we said, is a solution of nearly 20 gases. Two liquid, however, may or may not be miscible. For example, water and ethanols are, but water and gasolines are not. Two solids generally do not form a solution at all unless they are mixed at the molten liquid and then allowed to solidify. So let's have a look at what are the gas laws. The physical, of, the physical behavior of a sample of gas can be measured completely by four variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and amount of particles. So this, uh, these changes of the variables are deduced by using three laws, namely Boyle's law. So Boyle's law are usually used to deduce the relationship between volume and pressure. Charles law. Charles law are usually used to deduce the relationship between volume and temperature. And Avogadro's law is used to deduce between the relationship between volume of gas and number of particles. So with the hesitation, let's have a look one by one for all these gas law. So Boyle's law investigate the, pres uh, the pressure volume relationship of the gases. So this is a manometer. So as you can see from the manometer instrument, now given to here, this is the volume of a gas at a low pressure. However, as mercury is added towards the manometer, the height of the the height of the volume, uh, the height of the mercury increase. However, as the height of the mercury increase, it shows that pressure increase, the volume seems to decrease. So based on this experiment, so the pressure increase and the volume occupied decrease. Conversely, if the applied pressure decrease, the volume of the gas increase. So this relationship is also known as Boyle's law, which states that pressure of a fixed amount of gas as a constant temperature is inversely proportional to the volume. So pressure is inversely proportional to volume, or P is inversely with V. Therefore, under N under uh, any temperature, uh, under fixed temperature, pressure is inversely proportional to volume is multiplied by a constant R. Therefore, P times V is equal to a constant R. Under constant temperature and number of mole, PV equals to R. Therefore, P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. So this is the graph sketched uh, of a graph of volume against the pressure of the system okay so as you can see that this is uh, negatively divided that shows that p is inversely proportional to 1 over volume then you have a graph of v against 1 over t so when pressure is plot against 1 over t so since this is 1 uh, r over v so pressure against 1 over volume uh, uh, pressure against 1 oh, sorry uh, volume against one over pressure is actually this uh, is actually directly proportional. Okay, so allow me to refresh again. So this is a graph of volume, which is equals to a constant R times one over P. So it is a positive gradient, 
and the R here is the constants that we measure. So unit of pressure can be represented by different measurement. The connection between the unit pressure can be summarized below, where one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kPa is equal to 760 millimeter mercury. So if the value of the millimeter mercury, if the value unit of the pressure is given in millimeter mercury, it can be converted to Pascal using the ratio methods. So that is all for the introductions for Boyle's law. Then we have Charles law. So the Charles law is the laws that study the relationship between temperature and volume of the gas. So a straight tube closed at one amp track, a fixed amount of air under the small mercury plug. So the tube is immersed in hot water bath and cold water bath. So as you can see, under cold water bath, the trapped air in here is very little. However, as the pressure increases, this is a boil water, so the volume of the gas is more. So based on this experiment, we can say that volume and temperature, volume is directly proportional to temperature, or V is directly proportional to T, so V is equal to a constant R times T. So therefore, constant R is equal to V over T. Now, under constant pressure and the number of, vol number of mole, V over T is R, and therefore, V1 T1 equals to V2 T2. So now, not for the temperature. Temperature must be in the unit of Kelvin, where Kelvin is equal to the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. So how do we exactly get this temperature of 273? Now, this is a zero degree Celsius, okay? Now, when the variables is uh, manipulated, let's say this is under normal condition, where we have 0 0.04 moles and one atmosphere. So what happens if the number of particles decrease? So if the number of particles decrease, the, uh, the pressure, the volume of the gas also decrease. And what happens if pressure decrease? So if pressure decrease, uh, pressure increase, sorry, pressure increase, if pressure increase, the volume of the gas also decrease. So note that no matter you manipulated in terms of number of mole and in number of the pressure, all of them are going to meet at one same point. So this one same point occur at the temperature of 270 degrees Celsius. So for this temperature, we said that it is what we call as an absolute zero. So absolute zero occur at what we call as a zero Kelvin, and this scale is what we call as an absolute scale. So this is why when the temperature, if you want to convert from degree Celsius into Kelvin, you have to plus with 273 Kelvin. So the combination's law. So a simple combination in between Boyle's law and Charles law give a combined gas law, which apply to the situation when two or of the three variable changes and you must find the effect on the third. So given to you that based on the Boyle's law we say is that pressure is inversely proportional with volume and under Charles law we say is that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So using this relationship P is directly proportional to T over V so PV over T is equal to a constant R. So under number of co under constant number of mole of gas so P1 V1 equals to T1, P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. So there is a relationship that relates between the pressure, temperature and volume. Finally, we are going to have a look at the Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law relates the relationship between number of mole and volume of gas. In one of the theory published by the Avogadro's, it stated that equal volume of different gases contain the same number of molecules under the same condition. It follows by that the volume of any given gases is directly proportional to the number of molecule presence. So therefore, volume is directly proportional to the number of mole, or V is directly proportional to N. So therefore, fixate this will give volume is equal to a constant R times number of mole. So therefore, constant R is equal to volume over mole. So based on the conclusion above, Avogadro's has deduced one of its own law called as Avogadro's law, which stated that under constant pressure and temperature, the volume of all gas is directly proportional to the number of volume of any other mole pressures. So how do we actually relate this relationship? Let's have a look by using paper process as examples. So today, to form two mole of ammonia, you react one mole of nitrogen with three mole of hydrogen. 
So in terms of particles, one nitrogen molecule react with three hydrogen molecule to give two ammonia molecule. So in terms of if it is one mole, it is if it is in terms of mole, so one mole of nitrogen react with three mole of hydrogen to form two mole of ammonia. However, because they are gases, so they can be directly related to the volume. So therefore, one volume of N2 react with three volume of H2 to form two volume of ammonia. So we can make use directly the volume of the gases to represent the mole and interchange between from one to another. So according to Avogadro's theory, volume of any gases fixed at under the same temperature pressure has two conditions. The first condition is what we call a standard temperature pressure. So at standard temperature pressure, the temperature is at 273 Kelvin, pressure is 101 kilopascal. It is to say that under the standard temperature pressure, all gases has a volume of 22.4 decimeter cube per mole of gas. There is also another condition where we have room temperature and pressure, where temperature is at 298 Kelvin and the pressure is at 101.3 kilopascal. So under this condition, all gases will have a volume of 22.4 decimeter cube per mole of gas. So such fixated uh, constant is what we call as a molar volume of gas. So this is the molar volume of gas under standard temperature pressure. This is the molar volume of gas under room temperature pressure. So now we are going to learn how to combine these three laws. So just now we have witnessed that Avogadro's law is to say directly proportional to number of particles. Boyle's law stated that volume is inversely proportional with pressure and Charles law stated that volume is directly proportional to the temperature. So combine these three laws equation together, we produce one new law where volume is directly proportional to the number of mole and also temperature that inversely proportional to pressure. So this proportionality will give us to a constant where V is equal to R, where R here is a gas constant, is equal to NT over P. So rearrange the equation, therefore you have PV equals to NRT, where this PV equals to NRT is what we call as the ideal gas equations. So ideal gas equations describe the relationship between four variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of mole of gas. So an ideal gases is a hypothetical, uh, hypothetical gases whose pressure, volume, temperature we have can complete account by the ideal gas equation where the molecule of an ideal solution have the following characteristic. Number one, it do not attack or repel one another, and the volume of gas is negligible compared to the volume of the container, so therefore volume of the gas can be ignored. So gas constant R can be calculated by substituting the values of PV and T under the st standard condition pressure or room temperature pressure. So for example, under standard temperature and pressure, so R is equal to PV over NT, which is equal to 101.3 times 10 power of 3, multiplied with molar volume of gas at standard temperature pressure, 32.4 uh, decimeter cube per mole, times pressure, one uh, atmosphere, uh, one, one mole, sorry, for number one mole at uh, standard temperature, 273 degrees Celsius. So uh, 273 Kelvin, sorry. So based on this, this is um, uh, pressure. Pressure has is the derived unit from meter liter minus two, and this is meter cube. So meter liter minus two and meter cube is will give m. M is the uh, volume of the gas. Uh, so therefore, n times m. So the forces times the mass. So eventually, you derive to become eight point three one joule mole minus one Kelvin minus one. So application of gas law can be further extended in order to find the density and molar mass of the gases involved when the gas density equation is further given. So PV goes to NRT. So since small is equal to mass over molar mass, so PV is equal to M over MRRT. So since density is equal to mass of volume, we arrange the equation will give you a brand new equation where MR is equal to DRT over P. Okay, so I have for you all the three basic rules of the gas law. So I believe I'm going to continue later with more slides. Thank you.